five, Isaiah 25, verses six and seven. It says it clearly that ten says, and this mountain on and in this mountain shall the, the Lord of hosts make a copy. A feast of fat things, a feast of wine, of the leaves, of fat things full of marrow, of wine, of the leaves where you find. I will destroy in this mountain the face of the cup, cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. It is true that the blinding of the eyes or the seat of understanding is the key work of the enemy. And we saw in Revelation chapter or the last time we saw in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, where the Bible says that Satan deceived the entire world. So a lot of deceptions out there, they veil the face of the cup to prevent the people from seeing the glorious light of the gospel. As a result of that, this has prevented people from enjoying. The good life which God so much desired for us to enjoy. I want to go ahead and in there and pray. Every day, the covering of the face, the veil that veils the faces of the people, that is spread over the nations. I want to come against the veil in the name of Jesus. You may be in times of wrong, wrong uh, mental attitude, you might be wrong belief, wrong thinking wrong speaking, wrong belief. It might be the aspect of um, ignorance. It might be anything that it might be perhaps your culture, your nature, and things like that. What it might is, we're asking God this, this in, in the name of Jesus, that the day will be destroyed. The destruction of the day, that the day will be destroyed in the name of Jesus and the people of God will enter into the enjoyment of their own life. I am come that they might have life, have it until it, or enjoy it, and have it until it overflows, until it overflows. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind ourselves together in the power of agreement as we pray this in the Lord, in the name of Jesus, lifting our voice together in one accord. This is the hour in the name of Jesus for the face of the call that is cast over all, all people. And the day that is, that is um, uh, spread over all nations to be destroyed, to be destroyed, to be destroyed. Lord, whatever has prevented people from seeing the glorious light of the gospel in the aspect of their own life, is it traditions, uh, is it human, human uh, uh, explanation of scriptures that has uh, more or less obscured the truth of the, of the revelation of the gospel? What we come against such the right and the day of Jesus? We command to be destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. We ask for the light of the glory, glorious gospel to penetrate every day and destroy every day. The face of the cup to be destroyed, removed completely in the precious name of Jesus. We pray that your people will enter, that we will enter, Lord, that from level to level, from grace to grace, from strength to strength, into this abundant life progressively from one level to another. Lord, no more are we going to be static at one level. Lord, we will move progressively. We move all of us together progressively. Lord, into the center, into the, uh, uh, center of that which you have prepared for us in Jesus' mighty name.
in the precious name of Jesus as we lift up our voice and cry to God tonight about His mercy, His covenant mercy, His steadfast law, that He will end that covenant law to us in this season, in the name of Jesus. That will include every area, whatever the need might be. No, sorry, whatever the need may be in your life or in my life. We want to lift up our voice tonight in the precious name of Jesus. You need to read Psalm 136 to understand what I'm talking about. It is the loving kindness of God that meets every aspect of God's uh, people's need. So, the content of God's covenant with us is actually the loving kindness of God. We're asking that God will look upon us this season and render to us His covenant mercy. His covenant love in Jesus' mighty name to render to us His loving kindness in the aspect. Is it deliverance for me? Is it maintenance in particular need? That is exactly what the loving kindness of God will answer to in Jesus' mighty name. We want to together invoke that loving kindness tonight in Jesus' name. In that in Psalm 48, Psalm 48. Verses 9 and 10. We have thought of the loving kindness, that is the steadfast love of God, O oh God, and the midst of thy temple, according to thy name, O oh God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. The right hand of God is the right hand of his justice, his faith. Hallelujah. It's his right hand of power. Glory be to God. What do you invoke tonight in Jesus' name? That will be kindness. That will be kindness. Lord, render unto us in this season your loving kindness in the name of Jesus. In the name of every aspect of life, Lord, whatever the area of the name might be, brethren, lift up your voice tonight with me in the name of Jesus. Shall we go ahead right now and petition heaven? Oh, let's, let's go ahead in the precious name of Jesus. Oh, let's release the loving kindness of God in the name of Jesus to meet every outstanding need. Whatever the name may be, Lord, this is the hour. Lord, this is the hour. Lord, we thank you for the sound of the power of your mercy. Oh, hallelujah, you are faithful to your loving kindness. You are faithful, God. You are the God of truth. You are the God of faithfulness. Lord, in Jesus' name. You remain the same, you have not changed. Your nature remains the same. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our voice right now as we cry to you, as we release of God. So, God, in the name of Jesus, we love your kindness. Yes, in the area of our need, Lord, in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> we pray this for your church as well, in the name of Jesus. Yes, your loving kindness, oh God, let it be rendered out to us. Lord, in Jesus' name. Let your loving kindness and answer to every need. Merusca de la Bosque, Mesoto Pringa de la Bosque, the Lama La Cascada La Bosca, the Lama Bosca, Marusca Tataru Sacatia Ha, Rusi Kibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibib
Brethren, I want to welcome us to another session tonight. As we continue in our teachings on the abundant life. Uh, <clears throat> although definitely this, the whole of September is a month of thanksgiving and rejoicing. So, I'm, I'm not using any particular word concerning the one apart from the aspect of loving kindness. But it's, it's okay. Uh, we have not really dealt seriously to be what God sent for us from last month, this abundant life. So we're going to continue with the abundant life tonight as we look further into what God has in store for us. Hallelujah. Remember, brethren, it's not how much or how well. How well. So shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you in the name of Jesus for your faithfulness and your mercy. Lord, we Bow our heart, Lord, to head before you as we go into your world. Lord, we humble ourselves. We declare we do not know as well to know. Therefore, we are asking for your mercy to learn, precious Holy Spirit. The one who is able to open the ears, who is able to open the heart, who is able to instruct and seal the instruction in the heart of men. Open our heart as we did of leading. And Lord, help us that we may attend to the things that we have that we receive of you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. So our main text remains John 10:10. 10, 10. From the Amplified Version. So the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life. That they may have and enjoy life, not to endure life. I have it in abundance. In abundance uh, to the full till it overflows. It's interesting that God sees his intention for coming. Philosophers may say he brings a new philosophy of law. Oh, people may say a lot of things about the reason why he came. But he himself said, this is the reason why he came. That we might have life and have it more abundantly. That we might have life. I don't know where if I put it there. And enjoy life and have it in abundance. To have it and enjoy it. Enjoy life and have it in abundance. Till to the full till it overflows. First Timothy 6, 17, I think it said, Chant them that are rich in the world, in this world. And he's talking to you. That they did not hide my dead, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. All things to enjoy. God gives us all things richly. God wants us to enjoy things. God is not against us enjoying things. Hallelujah. But it's against things having us. When we begin to love things and, and the things takes us away from God. That is what God is against. Not in us enjoying things. So the translation, the partial translation says, eight has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. Life in its fullness until you overflow. Hallelujah. You are not there yet. I'm not there yet. But we need to believe God. We need to have a vision. We need to enlarge our vision so that we can accommodate and receive all that God intends for us to have. Because the last verse, we said something about it. The man who is spiritually developed cannot be at the mercy 
of the natural man. I can put it another way. The man who is spiritually mature, developed, cannot be at the mercy of Satan, cannot be at the mercy of circumstance, cannot be at the mercy of men. As a man who is spiritually developed. And the spiritual development, the spiritual development we're talking about is not just uh, positive, even in the negative sense. Even though we know that the highest of all spiritual power is of God. I don't know the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the first John 4, 4, you have gone into children and have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we have that. The Bible says about Jesus, I was called principalities and powers, and they, they show, he made a show of them who put a triumph over them. And uh, I think it's Colossians 19 that he's scared of all principalities and powers. And you are in him. You are in him. So even though he's the highest of all his spiritual power, if we fail to develop ourselves spiritually, we will be at the mercy of them. This is why. It is so important that we develop ourselves spiritually. I emphasize that on Wednesday. We take off from there this morning. So the goal that God's plan for us is abundant life. That's God's plan for our life. The goal of it is a good life. God has already made a plan, prepared a wonderful plan for you. And for me, and that is a good life. Uh, in Ephesians 2 10, it says, For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born and name, that we may do those good works which God predestined them, planned that beforehand for us. Taking path, paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them, living a good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. This is what God has already planned and prepared ahead of time for us to live. So, this life, Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse. Uh, so, for example, uh, 9 verse 8 explains it for them. So God is able to make all grace, every feeble, and after blessing, come to us or to you in abundance, so that you may always and under all circumstances, and whatever you need, be self sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. God has prepared for us that abundant life which we read in John 10 10. That is more than more than enough. We have said that excess is the will of God. That <clears throat> if we're just on the level of enough, it's not what God planned for us. That's not the will of God. God intends for us to move on until we get to the level of that excess. Excess. We have more than enough so that we can give to every charitable work, every good work. You have more than enough to give. Hallelujah. That's his plan for our lives. That is his plan for you. That is a plan for me. So the good life consists of all the spiritual blessings, the heavenly blessings in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1. Verse 3 and the first Peter 1 3 and 4. Those are the spiritual the blessings that Christ has already purchased for us. But they are in the realm and the spiritual realm. Through our faith, we bring them from the realm of glory to the realm of the natural. So the question we have been trying to resolve is this why have we not been able to live a good life? So we have dealt with the issue of Wrong belief and wrong thinking. Wrong believing, wrong thinking. We rob off of the good life 
God is so eager for us to be because it's already prepared. This work was finished before ever the foundation of the world. It has been prepared and made ready. So, unbelief, wrong believing, wrong thinking, wrong speaking, ignorance, and then, uh, and then, uh, the wrong teaching, or, 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 or just plain uh, uh, ignorance, ignorance. Um, yes, we are talking about money. Yes, we are talking about material things. But we are talking about something more, more than just material things. People of God, let's remember the fact that, you see, the external is a reflection of what is on the inside. The physical is a reflection of the spiritual. Told God to so that prayer go for all things that God may yes prosper and be in head, even as our soul prospers. So the prosperity of your soul will determine. So we are talking beyond just financial. It's about everything. The prosperity of your soul will determine how prosperous you will be externally. Is it mentally, is it physically, is it spiritually? All these will be seen. And it is in Luke 6 41, is it 46? And there it that says that uh, a good man out of a good friend stop in his side will bring forth something good. That is to say that the climate within will be time. The night without. The climate within will determine the cloud, uh, the climate without. What is within? So what will be reflected on the outside. Um, if we are to be very, if we are to reflect on this, we realize that majority of Christians do not even take their Christian walk with God very seriously. Very seriously. Um, think about it. Some of us are, we, we don't do what we know we're supposed to do. We know some of these things. But we just, on and off, we are talking on them once in a while. And we neglect them for a while. And we wake up again and say, oh, and start to do it again. Think about it in the aspect of your time, think about it in the aspect of your offering. Think about it in the aspect of your prayer, every aspect of your, your spiritual life. Luke says that he says it clearly. Give and it shall be given. Now, how do we start the whole thing, the whole process? Give. We know it's not for us. Harvest and seed. Mm -hmm. It's not reaping and so it is seed time, harvest time. It is so and reaping. We need to be to do these things consistently. We need to examine ourselves. In the light of our covenant work in all aspects, and give heed to these things and turn in very, very serious attitude to God in all these things. Remember, when something is not working, your fault is not with God. Your fault is not with God at all. God is the constancy we are the the person you need to look into is you, it's not God. So it's not the fault, it's not, not the God, it boils down to one thing. It is something you know which perhaps you are not doing.
or you do it once in a while, you are not consistent. You are not consistent. God is invariable. And he said, James 1 17, every good and every perfect gift comes from him. In him there is no variableness, no shadow of time. Remember this. I want you to note this. That inconsistency lies your power. You see, the issue is, is we are looking at critically at this that why we not enjoy the abundant life. And most of the time it's not so much of lack of revelation, but lack of consistency. We are not doing consistently what we know we're supposed to do. Is this speaking the word of God? Is this confession? Is it prayer? We are not doing these things consistently. We are not doing these things consistently. And once you, if you know what to do, and you simply do it once a while, you forget it for a while, and suddenly you wake up again. Ah! So, the point is this, if that is the way you do it, it will not work perfectly for you. What power? What blessing you lose? When you are inconsistent. Inconsistent. Inconsistency. Remember that. Inconsistency lies your power. Secondly here, again, some of us believe if it's such deep in our heart, because the heart of man is deep, is deep. Who can find out? There is this mentality that there is something wrong or something, uh, sorry, that there's something God about being broke, about being poor. Some people believe from within that, well, you are able to love God and serve God more than the did you. Some people believe that. The point is this. Let's get this very clear. There is no redeeming quality in poverty. There is no redeeming quality. I mean, think about it. Think. Look at poverty. Uh, what is the extremity of it? It destroys. It kills. It's just a kind of a degree or percentage of it. A little or a little of it can put, destroy some, put homes in, under serious stress, mining, some things like that, and destroy it. For a little about for a little of poverty, you don't have enough, don't. And a higher degree of it destroys some kiss, kiss man. So there is no indeed quality. No, at all about poverty. So, there is this mentality that there is something wrong or something. Uh, people look at people who have good things. I used to think it's only in Africa that for you to have something good and nice, you must have done something wrong. We must have done something wrong. The point is, as people of God, if God gives you something good, for you to have something does not mean you should live like that. Which is, of course, we we'll look at that. The reason why we need to pass tests. So you don't need to live like the devil because you have some, some, some money or some good things. No, you don't have to. No. And these are the things that keeps us from having things. Because this wrong mentality has kept us in this low level of um, exist, meager existence. Why some believe they are closer to God than if they are at their level? They are. 
So we need to believe that God can bless you. Oh, we need to believe that, that God can bless you and give you something costly. At no cost at all. Do you believe that? Something nice, costly. At no cost to you at all. God can give it to you. If only you can believe it for you. To him that believes, all things are possible. Not some things, all. All things are possible. So, let's, let's do it with the mentality that for you to have something nice or good, you must have done something wrong. No. No. Get this in your spirit. It is not what you have. It is how you get it. It is not what you have that is the problem. No. Never. It is how you got it. How did you get it? Is it that you borrow money that you can't see straight before you can get it? Is it that you raise money for something else and use it for something else? Or is it that God adds it to you? When God adds it to you, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And the blessing of God makes speech. It does not have any sorrow to it. Hallelujah. So it's not in really what you get. It is how you get it that matters. So it is this type of mentality that is holding people back. It's, it's, it's holding people back from a born and life. Keeping them at the out of having stuff. Keeping them in the low subsistence level of life, financial. I'm saying that we need to allow the word of God to radically change our mindset and change our life. Tolerance, remember this. Tolerance is a law. Please don't forget it. Tolerance is the first step towards acceptance. Whatever you can tolerate, you will have a moment of it. Whatever you can tolerate. Whatever you can put up with, you will have a moment of it. Listen. Verse 4. King James says, 
And by thy sword thou shalt live, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break this yoke from off thy neck. That's the way King James put it. And those some other versions say when you can, when you are agitated. The time will come when you become agitated. You will bring that your coffee. Whatever you hope it is. The Amplified says in this way. By your soul you shall live and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. It says. The time shall come when you will grow restive and break loose, and you shall tear his yoke from off your neck. That's the only But well, I love the way the message translation put it here. It says in a very plain everyday language. But when you can't take it anymore, You will break loose and run free. When you can't take it anymore, when you can no longer tolerate it, when it becomes intolerant, you can't tolerate it anymore. Then the hour of deliverance has come. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you need to hear poverty. Church 
is still in the wilderness cell. Little left to where I want to to. That's where we are. As God brought them out of Egypt, I mean, from the not enough, which is life in Egypt, not enough level, it's where, where they're paid at the end of the month, before the mid of the month, or middle of the month, uh, one time left over. From paycheck to paycheck, or the red begins to show. Hallelujah. But when you win that step, thank God, that's the level of just enough. God has brought you out from the not enough level. The ink has changed from the red to the black, or red to black. Where the bees have been paid. The bees have been paid. Um, but we barely have anything left over before the next check. And that is where the bulk of the believers are today. The question is is this where God actually wants us to be? I will say no. It is. The second stage, the second level, because the will of God is to take us to the level of more than enough. But the great question here is this, which we will begin to tackle next time we talk, is about passing tests. As we see the example in the Old Testament, We'll read Deuteronomy 6, we'll read Deuteronomy 8. We'll see the fact that God brought them into that level. His expectation was for him, for them, of uh, expectation for him, uh, for them is for, for them to be trained in the way of obedience, in the way of faith, how to obey God, how to live a life of faith. But that was what they refused to learn. They refused to learn it. They failed the manna test. They failed the water test. Every test God set before them. They failed them. Which was the reason why? A year turned to 10. 10 turned to 20. 20 turned to 30. 30 turned to 40. Was that the will of God? It was for them to quit their past tense and move into the land of more than enough. But since they did not pass the test, unfortunately, only two did it to the land of more than enough. We will examine this as we next time we talk. We we'll look at Deuteronomy chapter 6 and Deuteronomy chapter 8. We will see because it is that we are reading that from time and reading for our example. Those of us who knew the word of uh, the, uh, the word, the end of the word had come. Whatever happened to them, it happened to them for an example for us. So that we can look at their life and learn something from their life. In Hallelujah. We're not talking about today. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your word this, this evening, Lord, in the name that is above every name. Thank you for your provision for us. The goal is for us to be in the abundant life. The goal is for us to be in the good life, which you have pre-arranged, which you have predetermined for us to be. But we have seen that. From the example of the first column of being, because of lack of understanding, they failed the test, they perished in the darkness. Lord, we pray that that will not be our experience. Help us, O oh God, to own.
understand the way to walk in the path of obedience, to walk in the path of faith, so that we may enter into our rest. Because the first covenant people did not enter by the of our belief. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Quickly, we will bless God with our substance this evening. Hallelujah. While we are preparing in the offering, um, well, okay, let's let's read the scripture. We still have time to. No, we look to start it. That will give it shall be given to you. Good man, you praise God. Shake it together. I don't know. When you deposit, when you give. When you impact, when you relate, you set the body to motion. You set something to motion. Say spiritual law, it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run over. So let's prepare our gift for the Lord to see. Hallelujah. Oh, okay, Lord, let's see. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We give out the seed to the soil, the multiply of the seed so We worship you with our substance, and we thank you. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We pray that this be acceptable to you, Lord. Accept our seed and accept us, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we pray that this will be a trigger to set it into motion. Lord, the abundant life which you have prepared for us. We give you praise for this. We give you thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, one big announcement is uh, likely that we are again facing another lockdown for the next four weeks. It's likely the church will be closed, but uh, the Prime Minister is going to give his said. Uh, is it tomorrow? Tonight. Okay, it's going to address us tonight. So let's be open, but uh, from all indications, it seems the church will be closed for the next um, for some days. Uh, I will call it this, but uh, let's invest the time wisely. I know that lockdown is on the way. Let's invest the time wisely so that when we come out of this lockdown, we will have every cause to give you praise and to give you thanks. In other words, let's try and invest our time in wisely. In studying, in prayer, in fellowship with God, in getting to know Him better. Uh, whatever happens, I will set aside a text message to confirm to us as to what the the situation, whatever the situation is. Shall we share the grace together? Well, we have the prayer line, our fasting and prayer continues, and the prayer line opens 6 o'clock every morning, apart from Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Monday to Saturday, uh, apart from Sunday morning, we, the prayer line is open. We look forward to having you uh, on the prayer line. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace together. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be made and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely His goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of our life. And we remain and abide in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. Thank you for being a part. God bless you. See you on the prayer line tomorrow.